the best visual effects that I've ever done, I feel, are on the films that are not visual effects films or considered visual effects films, whether it's uh, Aviator, The Good Shepherd, uh, Shutter Island, those kinds of movies where it's not about a superhero saving the world. It's not about a spaceship crashing through you know, the ground. Not that those are bad films to work on. I love those films too, but there's something about the... There's a, there's a much bigger challenge on a film that takes place in the 1940s or the 1950s, and it is not, you just can't ever show your hand as a visual effect. It always has to look real, photographically real, stylistically real, editorially real. So whatever you're working on in that capacity has to be believable, and it literally is the most invisible of invisible effects. So those, those are my kind of my favorite films, and you know, Coen Brothers is the same thing. Although their films have a very specific style, Working on a film where, as I said, you don't show your hand that's in a as visual effect is, is the best. Ian actually worked with them on The Hudsucker Proxy and early in his career, Barton Fink, and then I worked with them on The Man Who Wasn't There and um, The Lady Killers. And uh, those, those guys are terrific. They're great filmmakers. They're very straightforward, very buttoned up. Um, you know, there's, there's no real back and forth. It's like there's, they have a concept. You work with their art department and whoever at the time is the visual effects supervisor. Actually, uh, Yannick Sears was the supervisor on the two films I worked with them on. And they have a very straightforward approach and you just work with them. But it was great. I mean, we've been, I have to admit, I, I've been very fortunate that we've worked with some amazingly talented directors across the board. Uh, working with uh, Mark Scorsese has been great. We've worked on about four of his pictures. Uh, we just did a, a number of really, really spectacular shots for the film Shutter Island, uh, where we employed miniature effects, matte paintings, compositing, digital effects. Whatever it took to get the shots, and we actually used a lot of models in that show, which was exciting, not only because, you know, again, it's a, it's a modern picture that doesn't necessarily require old school techniques. Shutter Island, it really was just about, the, the edict, of course, was well, whatever makes it look real, whatever makes it look great, you know, go that route. And uh, the shots we did in that picture are pretty seamless. You'd never know they were shots. It worked out really well. I would say that probably the most successful film I found success in creatively as well as sort of the finished work was The Aviator, um, primarily because it was a lot of really, really old school techniques that we worked on uh, from in-camera shots, hanging miniature shots. Of course, we shot things as elements and photographed things. One of the things that Marty wanted to do is he wanted the movie to be done with techniques that may have been used in Howard Hughes's time. That was one of the reasons why we did a lot of miniatures was that if Howard Hughes had to make the film today, how would he have done it with those techniques? And that was kind of one of the reasons we did the models. Obviously, there's a lot of digital work, of course. Our most successful um, pictures have been where the filmmakers really collaborate with us as filmmakers, as opposed to, oh, yeah, here's what we want, just do this. And when they let us be a bit more creative, we get much better work out of it. You know, to me, visual effects has always been, and miniatures is, miniature effects are just part of a bigger toolbox. You know, I mean, and I think that the problem and the challenge is that most visual effects now are always done in the computer, or, or not always, but looked at as, as digital, because people don't really know any other techniques. Is that the, the miniature work, it's not that it's not viable, it's not that it doesn't work, it doesn't look good, it's that it's just people don't know how to do it anymore. It's sort of gone into forced, I like to say it's forced obsolescence, because people don't seem to have, you know, when, when the computer, digital age was sort of being pushed in the film business, a lot of the people that were practitioners of the practical effects that dealt with you know, in-camera shots and particularly even photographic elements, they, it was, it's, a, it's a huge leap to go from doing practical work to digital work. It's a different mindset, it's a different sort of school, you know, technical school, so to speak. It's whatever tool works best for the shot. I don't believe that one is better than another blanket across the board. I think that if you're gonna do a shot that you feel, okay, we're gonna get if it's a high-speed shot or something crashing or breaking or something flying apart, then you'll get the reality of real gravity, real inertia. You'll get the light, the shadows that you get in a miniature effect or a practical effect. And I think that's some of the things that in simulations, while well, they're getting much, much better, and we've done actually some pretty spectacular digital simulations, I think that there's still a certain uh, uh, tactile and um, kind of visceral look to a practical effect being photographed. You know, I always try to make everything I do work well in photography and then take that, those materials and manipulate them digitally if we can. First and foremost, we always think, how can we do this for real? Maybe even if we don't do the shot for real at all, maybe it's 100% digital, I would think, if I had to do it for real, how would I do it for real? And then you apply those sort of, that mindset to the digital work. 